Hello there, hoppers, and welcome. Now, with the news of a Jurassic World live-action series currently in development, I thought it would be fun to discuss the ideas that I myself have had for quite some time in regards to a live-action Jurassic World show. And although I highly doubt this new series we're getting will be anything like any of my ideas, I still feel that the direction I would take the show is at least still worth considering. So, with all that being said, I now present to you my idea. The park is open. So yes, the show's working title is The Park is Open, and much as the title suggests, the show would take place in and around the Jurassic World Resort during the peak of its tenure. The show would follow different staff members from different departments on their day-to-day -day routines, watching them treat and care for the prehistoric animals whilst occasionally avoiding dinosaur outbreaks and even life-threatening situations. Now, the way I see it is there are two different directions this show could be executed. Firstly, as a storyteller format, also known as the classical Hollywood narrative. This is where actors are cast to portray characters in a usually fictitious story. These protagonists tend not to acknowledge the audience whatsoever, and the director has the freedom to choose exactly how the story is shown to the audience. Or the show could take a more stylistic approach and use a documentarian format. This style is mostly used as an observation of reality, where stories revolve around non-actors in apparent real-life scenarios. The protagonists themselves even address the audience, and often interviews and even voiceover narrations are used to help with the pacing and also to inform the audience of events that may happen off the screen. Now, I feel both formats would serve the concept extremely well in their own individual ways, However, personally, I would lean more towards the documentarian format because not only is it more unique, but it also allows for great opportunities to share new dinosaur information with your younger audiences. As let's face it, the staff can dish out facts to the camera explaining what they are doing and why they have to do it. Because again, because this would be a documentary, an inside look, all the staff members would be addressing the camera and therefore our audience. That way, it allows us to get this information without the dialogue seeming a little forced, shall we say. But yes, for anyone looking for an example of exactly what I'm talking about, you know, the style that I'm suggesting here, then look no further than the documentary TV series entitled The Secret Life of the Zoo, which follows the staff's day-to-day -day routines behind the scenes at Chester Zoo in the UK. That is pretty much my pitch. Think The Secret Life of the Zoo, but as if it was filmed at Jurassic World during those peak years. And personally, I think this is the best way to go, because I feel that the strength behind a show like this lies in its ability to show a vast variety of different emotions. You see, much like every zookeeper has to deal with their emotions, you know, due to the death of an animal they've cared for and maybe even grown attached to, or, or in some extreme cases, maybe the death of a co-worker. It's a golden opportunity to show the emotional side of the Jurassic World Resort. Think about how upset we all got watching the Apatosaurus die in the Jurassic World film. Well, imagine that same impact, but times ten. Think about it, right? We will not only be following just the staff in this show, but the animals as well. They too have their own story arcs. Like, maybe there's a Parasaurolophus, for example, that the staff have nicknamed Becky or something. And maybe throughout a number of episodes, the staff have to keep checking up on her because she seems to be acting strange. Then, a few more episodes down the line, she is actually revealed to be pregnant. And then, a few episodes even further, she then gives birth to a beautiful clutch of eggs. As an audience, we would feel a sense of enjoyment as we have been familiarised with this animal from the beginning and over time followed her on this journey. We feel like we know her at this point, so we celebrate with her. However, what if all of a sudden the offsprings didn't hatch? What if they were all stillborn? Suddenly we would then experience a completely different emotion, that of loss. Because again, we feel we know the animal and therefore we would mourn with her. 
You see, there are so many opportunities for these different conflicts and deep emotions. And, of course, they don't always have to be negative. Sometimes they can be emotions of joy. But like I said, it just gives that opportunity to go either way. And before it is said in the comment section, yes, I am fully aware that the dinosaurs in the park shouldn't actually be able to breed as they should all be females, as we learn from Dr. Wu in Jurassic Park. However, that being said, this has actually happened before, and more than once. As confirmed in Jurassic Park and The Lost World, the dinosaurs have in fact changed their sexes and have started to breed. And yes, you're probably saying, yeah, but surely they would have fixed that problem by now, because they've had that issue since the first film, and it's still Henry Wu at the helm. But remember what Malcolm always says, life finds a way. And maybe this fact could even serve as the biggest conflict in this whole pregnancy arc. Maybe the staff are like, this is great, it's the first natural birth of the park we should be celebrating. But the management in the background, including Dr. Wu, they're like, we can't allow the offsprings to live, or the mother for that matter, as they're clearly defective specimens. You know, we must maintain our control over the assets themselves, and of course their abilities to self-populate. You see, that could be a whole conflict in itself. Some of the park staff clashing with the management over what is morally the right thing to do in this situation. But regardless on whether or not this subject matter would actually even be used, the fact is it can be, and to great effect, just like many other potential story arcs this concept allows for. You could show customer issues, and they could be played off as at least a little comical, and even some of the staff's routines themselves may be a little more light-hearted such as a baby triceratops, for example, playfully running away with a staff member's hat instead of taking their medicine. Or hell, maybe even behind the scenes of shoveling up the dino dung. You get the idea. There are just as many opportunities for light-hearted entertainment as there is drama and emotional conflict. And speaking of conflicts, what would be really cool is when the show inevitably comes to an end, be it after one series or five, the last few episodes could tie in with the film itself, Jurassic World. Hell, maybe the last episode is the film, but from the staff's perspective. Again, we would feel more emotion towards the staff in this situation, especially if they were killed, because we have got to know them. However, that being said, I would still start the show months, if not years, before the Indominus breakout takes place, again allowing us to explore the park in its prime. And what would actually be really cool is maybe have a pack of the original Jurassic Park style Velociraptors in an enclosure as an actual attraction. But then again, over time, due to their violent nature and their constant escape attempts, they eventually get rid of the enclosure altogether. Hell, maybe the audience themselves are too scared to approach the glass. Maybe the raptors even do break out a couple of times, killing a few employees along the way. This could really make for some truly terrifying sequences, and due to the deaths being staff members, the attacks could then be covered up by InGen themselves, with them putting the blame on the employees and not the assets. Not only do I think that would be really cool to see, but it also speaks volumes about the corruption surrounding the park. However, that being said, I do feel the idea with these raptors would only really work in a more traditional style of filmmaking, as it would definitely allow more tension to be built and maybe even occasionally show the violent attacks, something that a family-friendly documentary would never be able to display. And that's my point exactly. As I said, there are two ways this concept could be executed. And everything I have mentioned so far in regards to story elements or even the emotional potentials, although these features would be great as a documentary styled show, it would still work perfectly with a traditional show mechanic. Hell, in some places, such as my idea for this raptor story arc, it would actually work better. Overall then, whether it's a documentarian format or the classical Hollywood storyteller narrative, 
I genuinely feel a series like this has so much great potential to not only keep us on the edge of our seats or pull at our heartstrings, but also to educate us about the dinosaurs that inhabit the park. And that's not all, as it will also give us an insight to the inner workings of the resort itself, as well as allowing us to visit parts of the island's attractions we never got to explore in the films. And although the direction of the actual live-action show will most likely be following with Battle at Big Rock's Dinosaurs on the Mainland concept, I still feel the idea of following staff at the peak of Jurassic World's reign is probably the best and most interesting direction to take, especially when you consider we're already going to get Dinosaurs on the Mainland in the next film. And although I don't have a problem with that concept, it's definitely not the one that I would personally choose for this new live action series. Well Hoppers, that just about does it for this video, but just before I go, I would just like to quickly say that I do actually have a whole series plan laid out, and even character profiles for my Jurassic World series idea. So yes, I have the whole thing more or less planned and in quite a lot of depth. So if that's something you guys would actually like to hear and have me discuss in a future video, then just let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have. Take care, hoppers, and I'll hopefully see you next time.